very interesting, you know, news dropped um, online that I wasn't expecting. That Wonder Woman 1984 will maintain Batman v Superman continuity. Well, I guess let me take that back. Of course, part of me isn't surprised because, you know, this movie still takes place in the established DCEU timeline. But there have been, we've been inundated with all these rumors that, you know, the DCEU is trying to get away from the Snyderverse, you know, and that Wonder Woman might be a soft reboot or the Flash or whatever, or that DC, you know, Warner Brothers wants to leave that behind. So I guess there was a part of me that didn't think there would be any BVS continuity. But when you think about it, it makes sense because we first met Wonder Woman in the Snyderverse. So how could they completely, you know, veer away from all of that? I mean, if they did now, it would be like she's coming out of nowhere. But let's get into this Screen Rant article. So apparently this news came from Empire Magazine, but I guess it was in the print article. It didn't surface online until Luis Fernando, a very respected movie film enthusiast on Twitter, he's reiterating the fact that from that magazine, um, there's information saying that the movie maintains BVS continuity, at least as it pertains to Wonder Woman. And I guess that makes sense because Empire is a UK magazine, if I'm correct. Um, and Luis Fernando is British himself. I think I'm correct about that too. So it makes sense. But let's get into this Screen Rant article that covers it. While Wonder Woman 1984 has delayed a couple of months due to our current global crisis, the marketing machine for the film continues with a brand new feature in Empire magazine via Luis Fernando. On top of unveiling new images... The outlet also provides new story details, including the confirmation that the film will indeed maintain Diana's career as an art and antique curator. In the upcoming sequel, she's working at the Smithsonian and keeps an eye out for any dangerous or mystical artifacts that could cause havoc. Little typo there that tripped me up. And here is Luis Fernando's direct tweet. According to Empire, BVS is still canon in Wonder Woman 1984, and Diana works at the Smithsonian. And Diana works at the Smithsonian Museum to keep track of any dangerous or mystical items. And lives in the Watergate complex, where she has a view in any direction of Washington and can monitor the U.S. government. Um, recently, Zack Snyder revealed some new insight regarding the creative process of bringing Wonder Woman to life in BVS. He explained that the photo of Diana and Steve found by Bruce was supposedly from the Crimean War and not World War I. Now that right there is interesting because the Crimean War, I think World War I was in like the 1920s, right? But the Crimean War, I think that was in like the 1850s. Um, so that was way, way back. So I guess it must have changed stuff. Originally, I guess Wonder Woman, the first one, was supposed to take place in the 1800s. But I guess somewhere during the creative process, they were like, nah, let's have it a bit farther in the future and have it World War I, apparently. The filmmaker also added that Wonder Woman was the leader of the DC Trinity of Heroes because she's the most experienced among them, making her more knowledgeable in taking on their adversary. Oh, okay. She didn't seem like the leader in BVS, though. I guess these must be, must be things... When she showed up in BVS to fight Doomsday, she didn't seem like the leader. She seemed like... They all seemed like they were like equals working together. Like she didn't take command. She didn't take command in Justice League either. Oh, but Justice League, the one we saw in theaters wasn't Zack Snyder's Justice League, was it? Um, maybe this is all stuff he had planned originally, but they changed it later on as they spent more time thinking about it. Because I'm confused. At that point in 2016, there's no way of knowing what Diana has been through. And this is why tracing her origins through Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984 is pivotal in establishing her as the leader of the Justice League. Whenever it is, they reassemble again on the big screen. Oh, yeah, so maybe they're leading up to her being the leader of the Justice League, which would make sense. Um, but she didn't, she hasn't seemed like the leader of the Justice League so far in her appearances. She seems, they all seem kind of like an equal footing. And in Justice League, the theatrical cut, it seemed like Batman was the leader. Because he was the one who was getting everybody, well, yeah, getting everyone together for the most part. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's cool that Wonder Woman is in Washington because of these reasons, you know. It, is stop, it continues the history. I mean, in the Zack Snyder movie, she was, you know, interested in antiques, old artifacts. She had that kind of job. But also, um, this movie seems to have visually a lot of, like, 
callbacks to the Linda Carter TV show. I know in the Linda, Linda Carter TV show, Wonder Woman was heavily involved in like government and military stuff. And in this movie, she is too. I mean, she works in Washington, the capital of the country. And, you know, she is monitoring things that the U.S. government's doing with artifacts. Um, so, and, you know, it's just the color tone and the vibe of the movie so far from what we've seen. It looks a lot, you know, it's very bright and colorful the way the Linda Carter show was. Even the Linda, the Linda Carter show, I think, was late 70s, early 80s. That was kind of a 70s show, and this movie takes place in the 80s. But still, um, the 70s and 80s TV, there were a lot of similarities. They weren't that different from one decade to the next, and they were both very colorful era, er, eras. The 70s and the 80s had a lot of color. Um, so I think that Wonder Woman 1984 will be very meta and very true to her roots, not just in movies, the Zack Snyder roots, but also her roots in pop culture. Very exciting. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel because I appreciate your viewership and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.